Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create and grow income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Are you tired of trading your time for money? Do you desire freedom today instead of retirement in 10, 20, or 30 years? I'm MC Lobsher, and this is the Cashflow Ninja. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobsher here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today. In today's show, we're going to look at how to create a brand to broadcast your message. My guest in this episode is my friend Eric Cabral. Eric is the founder of the creative agency On Air Brands, the real estate investment company Mindado Investment Group, and he's also the host and co-host and producer on several shows that include Entrepreneur Circle, Capital Hacking, Live at the Hive, Real Estate Hackers, and SJREIA Live. And of course, he has many, many more in progress. With multiple businesses and partnerships, Eric is the quintessential serial entrepreneur who spends much of his time helping others grow their businesses, brands, and personal brands. After leaving corporate America after 20 plus years, Eric jumped headfirst into real estate investing. He spent roughly a year educating himself, forming relationships and analyzing hundreds of deals before he purchased his first multi-family apartment building. He's also a partner in the Renault Winery and Resort, which is the third oldest winery in the United States and offers private capital to his network of investors for fix and flips, wholesale deals, and various other investment strategies. If you're interested in joining our investors group, you could go to cashflowninja.com forward slash investors group and fill out an application form and or email me at info cashflowninja.com to start the discussion to see if you're a good fit for our group. And if you're in the Philadelphia, Bucks County, and Southern New Jersey area, we are hosting a live investors meetup event every month in Newtown, Pennsylvania. For more information on the monthly event and information on how to join us at our next live event, you could go to cashflowninja.com forward slash events. I'm also speaking at the Multifamily Investor Nation Summit coming up on June 27th through June 29th. It's a three-day information-packed event for multifamily investors with over a 1,000 attendees and over 50 speakers. You will hear from experts about finding deals, raising capital, underwriting strategies, selecting markets, and much, much more. To access the event, you could go to apartmentevent.com to grab your ticket. And when you use promo code NINJA, you get $100 off your ticket. If you are like many of the listeners of the show, you're always looking for unique ways to protect and grow your hard-earned capital. But sometimes, that's easier said than done. The key to investing late in the cycle is identifying favorable opportunities on a risk-adjusted basis. That's where our friends at ASIM Capital come in. Since 2011, ASIM has helped more than 300 accredited investors allocate more than $20 million to mobile home parks, self-storage, and workforce housing due to the ability to generate asymmetric returns while protecting their investors' portfolios. If you're interested in learning more, head over to asymcapital.com. That's A-S-Y-M capital.com to get instant access to their investment offerings. MC Lobshire, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast and also the president and chief wealth and investment strategist of Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate cashflow banking, also known as infinite banking, with their business and investments. If you're interested in learning more about how we create strategies that integrate cash flow banking and investments to turbocharge them, you can access a video series at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, MC. Very excited to have you on. Uh, always enjoy our conversations and learn a lot from you. And what a fantastic group you have over there. So I've been very honored and fortunate to spend a lot of time uh, with you guys over there. So super excited to jump into our show today. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure and I'm, I'm a huge fan. So this is, this is exciting. Uh, do you mind sharing a little bit about your background and journey with my listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a creative uh, first and foremost, uh, I was in the creative industry and still in the creative industry for over 20 years. Um, but then I got into real estate investing somewhat recently. And um, 
that really opened doors for me as far as uh, becoming a business owner and an entrepreneur. So um, to rewind, you know, take the way back, you know, DeLorean machine here. I, I was in creative um, in Fortune 100 companies and, and creative agencies for a long time. And, um, you know, I did the daily grind, you know, nine to five um, and sometimes, you know, nine to nine, nine to 2 a.m., and that was the normal lifestyle, right? That's what was expected, especially in the creative industry, which is very aggressive. And I, I got laid off a couple of times. And the, the last time I started to go through the, the, the normal routine of getting my resume updated, uh, starting to make phone calls, um, you know, just, just doing what I, what I would normally do and what others do when they get laid off. And I realized, you know, we're going on our second child here. Um, I had opportunities come to me that were going to take up a lot of time, you know, just like, you know, what I was already accustomed to. And I wanted to change. I wanted something, something different where I can actually watch my second child grow up. <laughs> and I wanted freedom um, to do what I wanted to do because I felt really locked down and chained to my desk and, 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 the goals of the company that I would work for. So I said, you know, I'm going to take a little break. I, I turned down some golden opportunities to grow inside, uh, to grow internal agencies. Um, you know, big, big, big pharmaceutical agencies were starting to um, grow inside, grow, grow internal agencies. So they asked for me to head those up, you know, in New York City and, and Chicago. So I had a, go a long conversation with my wife and I said, you know, I think I'm going to figure out and write my next chapter. So that led me down the rabbit hole. I discovered uh, the purple book, right? <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, it was either invest in stocks, which I already did, um, or, and I wasn't really good at it, honestly, MC. I, <laughs> I lost a lot of money, made a lot of money. It was it, it's very, you know, just, just heart-wrenching. So I, I said, you know, let me look into this real estate thing. You know, Kiyosaki sort of scratches the surface in his book about it. Uh, let me look into it. So I jumped into his program, honestly. I, I jumped into the legacy program to really tell and, and to prove to myself that it was a real thing because I didn't know anyone in my circle because creatives don't really invest, you know, whether they do 401ks, they do the safe, you know, investments. That, that's all we're taught. So I, I needed to see proof in the pudding. I started to meet and shake hands and, and, and just amazing people in that network. And then I started to go to my local RIAs. And, you know, a year later, I, jo I joined the board and just got so involved. And during that time, people started to recognize my creative skills, right? They would ask me, hey, Eric, who's, who's doing your logo or who did your website or who did your business cards? And same answer it was always me, 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 right? Well, you know, can you help, can you help us out? You know, we don't really have anything that looks great. You know, everybody, as you can imagine in real estate, um, it's, it's, it's very focused on numbers and analytics and right and strategies, not so much the creative side of things. So I helped a few investors out and the helping became more and more freelance and then the freelance turned to me hiring people because I couldn't do it all myself. And then it turned into a business. So then I had to start my own creative agency called On Air Brands. So that's where we are now. And that's how we met, actually. So, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, this conversation is like perfect at a perfect time because, you know, there's a lot of things happening in mar in the marketing space and especially when it comes to businesses for entrepreneurs out there for investors um it's very very accessible there's no barrier to entry which is fantastic you have, you, you basically have a smartphone and all of a sudden uh you have a platform right to Absolutely. to yeah. to to connect with the world so that leads to a lot of people a lot of people being on social media and being in the space and marketing and so forth. Um, what are some of the things, the, the, the core f 
thing that you think that a lot of people struggle with and what are some of the solutions? Or how, how do you stand out in, a, in an ecosystem that's so crowded with so many voices and so many people? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I completely empathize with, with those folks and I, I was in that boat, you know, and to a degree still am. And um, I noticed certain individuals that stood out um, when I first joined, you know, jumped into the real estate space. Um, and those individuals stood out to me because they had content, massive tons of content on YouTube, on Facebook, and constantly offering value to the audience. Um, and it was just seeing them every day, um, uh, educating me, which led me to the path of, you know, this might be the answer. You know, uh, I, maybe I need to start a brand. You know, maybe I need to start... I had a company, I created a, a, my real estate company, Mandato Investment Group, but it, you know, it, it was pretty, but there was no real strategy as far as what am I going to do to create brand awareness? So I, I started to leverage my strength, which was branding and marketing um, you know, for over 20 years. So I, I started to implement what I saw the, the industry was doing and not just real estate investing, you know, any type of entrepreneurial business, I noticed if, if, if you, people knew who you were, then they're more likely, obviously, to do business with you because they know who you are, right? Um, so that's the problem that, um, you know, we've touched on this before, is if, if people don't know who you are, uh, they are not, they're not aware of your company and what, what, what value you provide, then what, how are they going to do business with you? So that, that's the first thing you have to tee up. Like, how, how do I create awareness for myself and how do I, how do I become ubiquitous? You know, that's that's really the key in today's landscape, becoming ubiquitous. You know, I, 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 anyone who follows this space, you know, Gary V is obviously um, everywhere. So I'm not saying that you need to become a Gary V, but become a Gary V in your circle. You know, become become the guy that everyone knows is uh, you know the real estate syndicator or you know it, it invests in this ter- certain type of strategy. This guy crushes wholesaling or this guy crushes fix and flips, you know, just be, find that niche and just spread it out there. You know, don't stop. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so brand awareness is a big thing. Brand yeah. consistency. I would also absolutely. add to that. How, um, because can you um, share a little bit uh, about brand design and brand strategy? Because here's what I see a lot of folks do. Uh, do. They see, for example, they see a Gary V. They see, you know, uh, a Grand Cardone and, and these folks, and they see them constantly. They're everywhere, right? They're just ever present on present on all the, the different platforms. Yeah. Um, but they are consistent in their messaging and certain things because they've developed a brand overall con- brand strategy that's consistent, that consists out of, you know, a brand vision, uh, brand values, all that other things. Can you share a little bit more insight into that? Yeah. That it's not just as simple as grabbing a microphone <laughs> or a video and blabbering every day because you yeah. can lose folks pretty quickly if you're all over the place. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and I agree with you 100% MC, although, you know, I don't... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down for folks at home, for your listeners and your viewers that, um, yes, there is a very, you know, by design methodology to branding, okay? But I don't want you to shy away from once, you know, I explain and break and distill this down for you, um, not to be afraid of actually just picking up your phone and having a conversation with your audience, okay? So there, there's still a lot of value in that, but... Eventually, when you get comfortable with that, and I highly recommend people get comfortable with being in front of the room and also being comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? So a lot of people don't want to get onto social media because they're worried about how they look or they're worried about what they're going to say. And I say, you know, yes, go in with a plan and an idea, but don't wait too long. Just hit record. So, okay, that's First and foremost, and then I'm going to get into here sort of the, the meat and potatoes of what you're talking about, because this is branding 101 and also branding um, really businesses, like, what, the, like the main elements and ingredients that all businesses need to have, which is sort of in, in, in tune and intertwined with, with branding. So like you mentioned, number one, you have to have like a vision, right? A vision of what it is that you're trying to do, what it is you're trying to provide to the world, 
you know, for people. And then also, you know, for yourself, your why. We're always talking about what is your why. You know, you have to have a driver. You have to have rocket fuel in your in your ship in order to take off and to get up every morning and to keep pushing forward, right? Even when your chips are, are down and, and, and you're not feeling up to it, you need the why, you need a vision, right? So, so capture that. Number two is you have to have a strategy, right? You have to have, uh, you know, a plan of attack. So, you know, you have to make sure it's solid, right? It's a really strong strategy, you know, so, so don't sit in a silo and figure this all out by yourself. You know, go to your peers, go to your network, and, and you go to your business partner and figure out what it is that you are trying to do and does it make sense, okay? And then once it makes sense for you, put it in stone, put it in paper and commit to it and review it. You know, keep going back to it. it what we're doing here is this on strategy, right? Because entrepreneurs tend to have shiny object syndrome and uh, I'm guilty of that myself. But having it written down and being able to reference it and say, okay, I wanna pursue that opportunity but is it in line with our strategy, okay? And it's okay to pivot. It's okay to pivot if you see that it's not working, but give everything time. You know, don't just try a strategy out for a few weeks and then say it's not working. You have to be patient. Um, so the next thing is uh, you have to have systems, right? Obviously, you have to have systems. Once you have the vision, once you have the strategy, have systems in place that will make your company and your what you're trying to do efficient. Because if you don't have an idea of how things are getting done, um, you're just gonna keep uh, you know, running into speed bumps, roadblocks, things that are um, occupying a lot of your time and you wanna make sure that you're doing things in the most efficient manner, okay? So then, um, you know, and I know this is very business and we'll, you know, I'll, I'll circle this back into branding. So, um, and then last but not least, I think the ingredient of execution, right? Speed of implementation, making sure that the plan and everything is being executed. Because if you're not doing that, you're not gonna have any results. Right? You're not gonna have anything um, as far as, you know, your, from your vision and your strategy and, and what you're trying to give to people and how you're trying to help people. None of it's gonna happen if you don't make all of this work together and execute, okay? So, so I know I got very business-minded there, but it really is in line with branding. So you, what you wanna do is make sure that when you have your vision and your strategy solid, Come up with a plan for your voice, right? So what is your, what is your, what is your core values? What are the pillars of your beliefs? Going back to the why. And then making sure all your messages reflect, like MC said, on a consistent basis, that message, right? Whether it's education. I'm here to educate. I'm here to tell people how they can, you know, invest in certain uh, strategies, um, I, you know, I'm here to, to teach people how to, to join a syndication or how to, you know, how to, how to accomplish something. If, if that's what you want to do and that's your niche, then make sure that you're, you're always focused on that. Um, and then when you go onto social and when you, when you push out a message, what is the message about? Are you talking about, edu are you educating or are you talking about a specific event that you need to sell? And if you have an event or a book or a conference, is it in line with all of your pillars? Is it in line with your core values, right? Everything always goes back to that strategy and that vision and that why. So um, I can get really granular, but I wanna give you, know, you a, <laughs> if you have any questions, MC, but I can get really granular about strategies when it comes to social media and how you actually um, dissect and compartmentalize your messages that I often like to share with people. Um, you want me to get into that? Yeah, we can jump into that. Just a, just a quick comment too. One of the things that you mentioned um, was to take pick up the microphone or the camera and to start. And here's, here's an insight that I would share with that as well. If you're authentic from the, from the get-go, it's going to be aligned as your strategy and your plan develops because it's you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You're not, you're not pretending to be something that you're not. If you're yeah. authentic and sincere, so when you grab it and lead with authenticity, 
in developing it, I mean, it's it's kind of like a it's it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You take action, but you are also developing a strategy, and and sometimes you know you got to figure out what works, what messaging works, what 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 do people want to, um, what what would people like to hear about? Because the, again, back to there's so much information. And um, I follow Frank Kern as well. Sometimes he he just, he drops these absolute bombs. And one of the things that he was said too is the insights, right? He said, there's so much information. So people are attracted now to insights as well. So that might be something to put into to your content as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that and just share a little bit about uh, what you wanted to share about messaging on, on social media. Um. Yeah, yeah, I agree with everything you said. Absolutely. You have to be authentic. Um, You have to be genuine. Uh, People, you know, the sniff test, you know, people can really tell very quickly, you know, upon a handshake, eye contact, any little thing. And this is also a brand, you know, when we're talking about branding, you know, I'm heavy into personal branding. And, you know, your brand is everything. So when you walk in the room, how are you dressed? You know, um, uh, how how are you? What's the frequency um, of your vibe when you walk into a room? So that, that is very important. Are, are you high energy? Are you low energy? You know, be aware of it. You know, be, be very self-aware of how people perceive you um, because that is your brand. You're a walking brand. And if you don't represent your brand in, in its best light, why is anyone going to want to do business with you? Why is anyone going to want to trust you, right? We, we, you and I always talk about, um, you know, no like, and trust. <clears throat> people only do business with, with those they know, those they like, and those they trust. If you don't have those three things, people are going to walk away and go to the next guy that they know, like, and trust, right? So I, I highly recommend that whenever you, you, you're, you're a step out of the house, <laughs> right? It, think about your branding. You know, you represent your company. And if your company is just you, even more reason why you have to be hyper aware of, of everything you're doing. Um, and, and not to become um, self-conscious about it, but, you know, at least like MC is saying, be genuine, be authentic, be true to your message because people know if you have a hidden agenda right away. You know, it's just instinct, you know, like spider sense, you know, tingles. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, that, uh, so to get granular about social media strategies and, and, uh, and oftentimes people ask me, you know, wh- what should I jump into? You know, should, is Facebook and Instagram. People get really intimidated by all the platforms. And I always tell them, you know, you don't have to be great at all of them, you know, be amazing at one of them, you know, be really comfortable in one. Well, which one do I pick? Right? Well, it depends on who do you audit? Who's the audience, right? If you want to, you want a group of professionals, you know, you want to, you want to pull investors, you know, who who could potentially jump into your deals. I highly recommend LinkedIn. It's a very uh, growing, amazing platform for people to put themselves and position themselves as thought leaders, right? And, and, and community builders, because they give you the tools to, uh, to put out newsletters and blogs and content that you can share with people and they'll eat it up. They'll consume the hell out of it because um, if it's something that they're interested in and it's something that they're, they're, they, they just have an appetite for, I highly recommend LinkedIn and start to blog, right? So that's for your professional set or, uh, yeah, or business to business, right? If you are uh, someone who is into wholesaling or, or fixing and flipping and you want to find friends and family who could potentially give you private money or, um, you know, or jump into a, a, you know, JV on a deal with you, Facebook is great because you still have you know, the, th- the 30, 40, 50 somethings on Facebook, tons of people, right? And, and not only that, Facebook has made it so easy for SMC to boost posts and ads, right? It, just a year to two years ago, it was difficult to, to create ads on Facebook um, for, the, for the average person because the back end of it, it looked nothing like Facebook, right? And um, there was a lot of uh, criteria and, and, and things to focus in, on targets, uh, target audiences. It was very intimidating, you know, but now it's accessible to everyone on their phones um, right on the front end you know, boost this post for $20. So if you have a business and you want to get out there, it's a very low barrier to entry, easy uh, to, to 
take a risk and test, right? I'm always a, a big proponent of uh, testing and tweaking, right? You know, test, try, and tweak along the way is what I say. So uh, Facebook is great for that. And then Instagram, you know, you want to, of course, obviously hit up the millennials. You, you want to hit up the younger crowd. You want to make them aware of, of your brand and what you do. For example, I'm, uh, I have, I'm part of a, on the board of a nonprofit, uh, a big real estate uh, investing group. And we have an average, I would say, uh, uh, members between 50 and 60, 65. So what do we need to do? Um, you know, in 10 years, our organization's going to be go- going away, right? Uh, well, we need to start targeting millennials. So what do we do? We, we advertise on Instagram, you know, and Facebook and where they, you know, maybe eventually Snapchat when, uh, you know, but right now those are the places to go if you want to reach those specific crowds. Um, and then there's very specific ways to, to uh, put your message out on those platforms, which, you know, we can get into now or, or later, but yeah, there's very specific ways that you could, sort of strategize your content on those platforms. Uh, let's talk about video a little bit and, and podcasting. What are some of the things that people need to be aware of to there? Because obviously audio is very, very powerful yeah. and video is the, I mean, that's the, the, the that's the tool that seems yeah. to be the hot tool of the moment, oh, live man. streaming and, and so forth. Jeez. So I, I forget where I heard this, but there's a statistic out there that said, um, in 2020 and 2021, uh, videos are going to be 80 to 90 percent of viewers um, viewership on phones and, and desktop. So what that means is right now we're currently uh, around the 50 55 percent mark where people consume their content, um, um, you know, audio, video, you know, television, Netflix, whatever it is. Everyone is moving towards uh, video online, right? So whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. Um, as you could tell, these large companies like Facebook and LinkedIn and, and Vimeo are all in on video, right? They, they, they see and know and have done studies, countless studies, that that's where the market is going. So I highly, highly, highly recommend if you are not doing video right now for your business, you have to implement this into your strategy. It's, 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 a give, it's 100%. So whether that's Facebook Live whether that's live streaming on YouTube, live streaming on Vimeo. There are so many tools and platforms for us to leverage to get our message out there. And people, like we said, like they want to do business with someone they know, like, and trust. And how do you do that on a very quick and easy uh, basis? Video. <laughs> right? They see your face. They hear your voice. They see your body language. This is the kind of guy I want to do big or gal I want to do business with. I like this person. This person sounds genuine. I like the way they look. I like the way they sound. Um, you know, they always give me valuable content when I when I tune in. So video, 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 video. I even um, I have a client that is asking us to create Facebook ads because they need to recruit. I said, okay, we'll do that for you. But are you doing video? No. Go onto LinkedIn and put out a video, 30 seconds that says, hey, you know, we are ABC company and we are currently looking for this type of person and these these are the roles and these are the responsibilities. We're really excited. Our culture, talk about your culture, talk about what it is you do and how you want them to be a part of the family, right? And just make it quick and you'll hit your target because they're on LinkedIn. They're looking for jobs. So if you're looking for employees, I highly recommend, if, if it's not you, find someone in your company that's really good and comfortable in front of the camera and grab a phone and just record that message. You're listening to The Cashflow Ninja, the show helping people all over the world create monthly cash flow and achieve freedom today, not in 10, 20, 30, and or 40 years. This is the show where cash is not king, but cash flow is king. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. My friend Dave Zook says, you can be conventional or you can be wealthy. Pick one. Dave and his team at The Real Asset Investor have syndicated many successful real estate and ATM projects over the last decade. Now his team has an exclusive opportunity for investors in the coal space. Do you want to be part of an energy project that takes conventional coal and cleans it up by extracting liquids while releasing almost zero emissions? 
The sale of these liquids can produce strong double-digit cash flow and aggressive tax benefits against ordinary income, all while using America's number one most plentiful resource in a responsible, efficient manner. Now that's non-conventional. For more information on this exclusive opportunity, you can visit therealassetinvestor.com or contact the Real Asset Investor team at info at therealassetinvestor.com. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the United States. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Learn how to find the best deals by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. You're listening to The Cashflow Ninja, the show helping people all over the world create monthly cash flow and achieve freedom today, not in 10, 20, 30, and or 40 years. This is a show where cash is not king, but cash flow is king. Now let's return to our interview. So video is huge. Podcasting, it seems to be a lot of folks going into that right now, and that's growing yeah. very, very fast. And that is right up. Uh, that's your niche. That's the, that's in your wheelhouse. That's, your, that's, <laughs> that's you. I'm following your lead, brother. I'm what, following you, man. What are you? Um, what are you? What are you seeing out there in the oh in the podcasting goodness. world? So, folks, if you are listening to this, obviously you love podcasts. You listen to podcasts. So you're not alone in this. Um, there are, you know, from a, from a numbers perspective, um, I forget what it is. Maybe it's 650,000 last time I checked, maybe seven um, podcasts out on iTunes and Spotify and all the major platforms, right? That is massive growth. You know, I, I forget the percentage of growth, but it's a massive growth in a short amount of time. So podcast is not something new. We all have heard of podcasts, right? It comes from, you know, the iPod. How, how long ago did that come out? Yeah. When, 50 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, but only recently has, uh, has, has the platform, and I think we're, we're, we're in, a, in, a, in a, I don't know if it's golden or silver type age. What do you, would you agree, MC, that they, like now podcast versus it, what it was five years ago, the awareness and the, the, the ability and, and, and how people realize now how powerful a marketing tool this is for them and their business. Um, it, it's, it's becoming a crowded space, but here's the thing folks. And, and I keep saying this whenever I do networking events and whenever I speak, um, I think podcasts today are what websites were in the nineties. So when, when websites became the rage, and a website, everybody wanted a website. It's the new business card, right? It's the new yep. flyer. Can yep. I keep it for right, right? Everybody, so, so all of a sudden, all these web design companies cropped up. Well, it's starting to happen now where podcast production companies are going to start cropping up, right? And On Air Brands is one of them, but we were a little bit ahead of the curve. Right now, I really feel the window is closing for those who want to produce content via podcasts um, and to create a brand uh, through podcasts. So I think the window's still open, but you better jump through like Indiana Jones grab and, <laughs> and sliding through and grabbing your whip because um, it's getting crowded. Um, but here's the thing. And if you do start a podcast, get past the eighth episode because that statistically is the number that crushes people. So if you don't get past eight, then you're most likely not going to continue on, but you're missing on on a golden opportunity to get your voice and your message out there because um, as MC and I are doing, we have podcasts and we reach hundreds and thousands of listeners um, across the globe, right? So what other platform do you know of other than what websites were, where you can reach people with your message in a short amount of time and a, and a light lift, relatively light, because now you could pick up your phone and start a podcast um, and get your message across hundreds of thousands of people overnight. I highly recommend creating a podcast. Absolutely. It's uh, it's one of the most powerful platforms too. And you're going to reach your audience. Um, uh, the people that you're looking for, right? The people yeah. that, that are commuting either in their cars, driving somewhere, listening, working out, relaxing and so forth. 
um, and people that want to improve their lives, right? So it's it's almost like uh, an instant access. You know, you plug into the matrix of where people already are that's trying to improve themselves, improve their families, and improve their lives on a daily basis. Yeah, because there's so much information out there, and I agree with you. I I think we're we haven't seen anything yet. I think this is this 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 is about to skyrocket and take off. Um, so again, back to you know, our original um, kind of uh, discussion that there's a lot of folks, there's the barriers to entry. You don't need to pitch a radio producer <laughs> at, a, <laughs> at a station to get a time slot where nobody yeah. listens and eventually work your way up, right? Yeah. This is, you're going to get instant access. And then now you're in the marketplace of ideas and creativity. And now you have to find your tribe and produce great uh, solid content and one of the things that you mentioned to it's so true you know just like anything in life um you're gonna start and you're gonna have to persist and be consistent and work towards that vision that you had you know um and and, and that you so eloquently stated because if that vis- vision and your mission is strong enough you're going to to continue. I mean, I speak from personal experience in the first six months. I'm like, is there anyone else listening, but my mom and my grandmother, (laughs) they're doing so just because, you know, they feel, they feel bad. Right. Yeah. No, but so you have to, you have to produce good solid content and keep going because there's a lot of folks, there's a lot of energy that goes into this, a lot of resources, a lot of time. Um, but in my opinion, it's some of the best, one of the best investments that I've personally made with my resource, my energy, my time that pays off over time. But again, it's, it's, it's the long game. And the, the, the final point that I'll make on this too is just like with anything else in life, you're not going to be um, – you're not going to be the best podcaster on the planet when you start, Exactly. <laughs> you know? So you're going like, I, I, I use myself as an example. I start and then I suck. And then I do a bunch of podcasts and I suck a little bit less. Yeah. And every single podcast, I start to suck less and less and less. And when you get a couple under your belt, then all of a sudden it becomes more natural and you kind of come into your own. So it's all about the journey, folks. Um, that's the one thing that what I was saying. That's the whole thing about branding and a strategy and standing out and elevating your business and your message. Um, it is about the journey and having other people along with you on this one is going to not only increase your your brand awareness, but also build a community. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree with everything you said. I I. I implore the listeners and anybody out there who is inspired and have been thinking about creating a podcast, um, just do, just jump in. I literally started in my basement and just started recording on my phone. And then I realized I kind of like this. I kind of like this, uh, this medium because I was doing video, more video. This was a couple of years ago at the time. And, um, and this was a little bit easier. Uh, but now, you know, obviously the way you and I do it now, it's a lot harder, <laughs> so we, <laughs> right? We, we make it complex, but, but, you know, I think the listeners and the audience really appreciates the production value of our shows um, because it does stand out from the rest and it does elevate us um, and put us in a category with, with the greats, you know? Um, and here's another sort of tidbit for a, a ninja tip for those out there. Um, 99% of the people I've asked to be on my show say yes right? Why, why wouldn't they? Um, because it's another platform for them to get their message out, right? It's another, so, so it's, it's a win-win situation for everyone involved because it's, it's elevating your brand awareness and it's giving you a platform for your message. Then it's also doing the guest a favor by creating awareness for their brand. So you, and then the, the, the synergy that happens that people don't often talk about you and I talked about this, MC, is what happens after the podcast, Mm -hmm. right? MC and I are friends now because he was on one of my shows. And then we go back and forth. And then now all of a sudden, you have someone in your circle and in your network that you can potentially become business partners with, right? And start to, so MC gives me a lot of tips on on, on his show and, and what he does on the back end. And, you know, we talk about all sorts of things, you know, branding and marketing and, um, other ways that we can help each other. So, so I highly recommend using it not only for a, a platform for your message, but also as a networking tool that um, is is not un, is not like anything else out there. 
Because you can literally walk up to anyone. You can walk up to Grant Cardone and say, hey, you want to be on my show? And he'll say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and uh, it's, it, it's just so true. And one of the things that I'd also mention, maybe you can speak to this is, and this is one of the things that I've learned on my journey too, is the first thing when you think about strategies, and there's a lot of projects that I'm working on too. So I, trust me, I still go through this. So you look at all the things that are uh, challenges, things are, that are in the way. Okay, I need to do this. This is the challenge that I need to overcome, basically. Once you then figure out that there are already systems and processes and people already there that can help you implement and process it, now all of a sudden, it, it, that challenge is out of the way. So I'll give you an example. Someone that doesn't know anything about podcasting or branding or some, anything like that, now all of a sudden, there's a, a company such as yours, On Air Brands, that can say, we got this, this is what we do, this is in our wheelhouse. And the same could be said for any other pieces, whether it's video production, whether it's social marketing, whether it's Facebook ads, whether it's YouTube ads, you, you name it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, in any type of business, um, I highly recommend, and, and, and you know, success leaves clues, right? Um, and I follow the greats. So when I got into real estate investing, what did I do? I surrounded myself with other real estate investors and experts who knew and had way more experience than I did. And I put them on my team so that when I found a deal, I can let, lean on them and say, is this a good deal? You know, I'm not 100% comfortable with my numbers. If they said yes, then I'll go to the next guy. He said yes, she said yes, this is a great deal. Now I'm comfortable, right? Same thing. And I think, you know, someone asked Russell Brunson, um, um, or was it, was it the other Brunson? But uh, <laughs> Branson, um, that um, you know, how do you have so many companies, right? And he's like, I surround myself with experts and I just let them do what it is they're great at, right? So that I don't have to do it. So that's what I also, um, you know, I do that for myself and my business and my sanity, but then we do that for others. So, you know, we have clients where they want to show, you know, a podcast and we say, okay, you don't have to figure this out from the ground up. We've already figured out the systems. We've already figured out the platforms and the branding and everything. It's literally you show up, you sit down, we record your voice, and then it comes out on iTunes, Spotify, and, and Google, and, and all the platforms. So I'm making it sound very easy, but that is the experience that we create for clients when it comes to podcasts. Same thing goes for social media. Same thing goes for live streaming. All that stuff is put experts in place, whether it's any of those sort of strategies um, and, you know, let them go to town because you are going, you are best in whatever it is that you're amazing at. Whatever your superpower is, keep crushing that and let the experts handle out the stuff that you don't want to figure out. You know, there's so many people out there that are very intimidated by social media marketing and they don't understand it. And that's fine, right? That's okay. But why don't you put, surround yourself with people who are great at it and just let them you know, produce results for you. Absolutely. And a big part that's going to play into that too. And this is what I see, uh, especially investors when they're trying to come uh, in and um, the podcasting area is finding that kind of like niche for themselves, right? Because you have like, uh, you have your health, you have your, you know, wealth relationships, basically those three with all the different sub, sub markets. So where do you fit in? Where is there an angle for you to position yourself? So you're not just another show about, you know, this or that, or just where there's thousands of it, but all of a sudden, you know, it's almost like, um, what is the book called? The Blue Ocean Strategy, right? Where you kind of find your little niche that you're not just competing against uh, 100 other shows that are exactly the same, but where you have your unique little niche that you can now draw people um, to, uh, into um, and share your message and get in front of them um, and, um, yeah, grow, grow your show that way. Yeah, perfect, perfect uh, question because I have a, a really good answer for that. So... You want to leverage experts, right? Going back to what we were saying, because the experts can basically get to where you're trying to go in a shorter amount of time because they've been doing it a lot longer. So you can apply that to any business. So in this particular instance, I've been branding and marketing for 23 years, okay? So things come generally quicker and easier for me because my mind has been, I've been working that muscle at the gym for a long time, 
right? Mm -hmm. I've got way over the 10,000 hours that you're supposed to write to become an expert. So I had a client that came to me and he says, I want a podcast, um, but I don't know what it's going to be. I, I think I might call it disrupting real estate. And I said, you know, that's a, that's a very heavy buzzword right now. Everybody's using the word disrupting. I don't think you really stand out. So I, I got to know him. I already knew him. And, but I, but I, you know, we, we go through exercises and in conversations and we go, we take a deep dive into you and your brand and your message. And his background is in tech, right? He, he, he was in advertising.com. He was one of the major players there. Um, he, he was during the dot-com era, you know, grew, grew that website and that brand and it was sold for millions of dollars. So I said, you're a tech guy that got into real estate, right? Why don't we call you? you know, something like real estate hackers, right? Why don't we call you something? So we created a niche and, a, and something unique that spoke to him, right? And he loved it. He said, yeah, that's exactly me, nail on the head. So what you want to do, and that came relatively quickly. So I'm not saying that it always will happen that way, but when you surround yourself with people who can get you there faster, absolutely leverage that, you know, and find those people that can help you get to where you're trying to go um, so that you don't have to spend a lot of time and money um, trying to get there yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. Did that answer now, your question? Yeah, absolutely. That's a perfect example because, um, yeah, now all of a sudden there's a, there's a different kind of angle that it's bringing into, and it's not just, you know, another show <laughs> yeah. in that, in the genre. So, right. and he stands out because there's a lot that you could do with real estate hackers, right? Like for example, that little brand there. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it puts already a, a visual in your mind. You know, we started going down the path, you know, zeros and ones and, you know, the matrix and, you know, it, it definitely stands out, you know. So, um, yeah, just just if, if, if there's a way for you to find out what it is, you want it to be unique to you, obviously, and you want it to be a very personal message that you feel strongly about so that when people come to you, you want to have a story behind your brand so people will get on board with that culture, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, Eric, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations, and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? So the purple book changed my life, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad as it did many, many, many people. Um, so I, I, I would pass on, along, if not wealth, you know, knowledge, the wealth of knowledge, right? And financial literacy. That term was not on my radar, you know, five years ago, financial literacy. Um, it was something that I know it was a subject I was very intimidated by. Um, but, I, but I am going to make sure that my children are financially literate, you know, while growing up because I, I wasn't, you know, we, we grew up in debt you know, uh, surviving on credit cards, um, you know, and I thought that was the norm. So uh, that's something I want to definitely pass along to the next generation. Um, work ethic is massive. Like I saw my mom growing up working very hard and that doesn't mean she was working smart, right? I mean, I, maybe she was working till nine, 10 o'clock at night. I don't know if she was efficient or not, but uh, I highly recommend, you know, working hard, but, you know, making sure you work smart you know, over, you know, working hard. Um, and then like we, we've been saying the thread throughout this show is, you know, just be honest and true, you know, o o always honor your word. When you tell someone, I'm going to have that to you by this date, or I'm going to, I'm going to find that out for you and I'll get back to you. You know, that stuff, it, although may seem small, it helps to build trust. It helps to build confidence in who you are and it helps to build strong relationships with people. So if you don't have those things, your business is not going to be as successful as it could be. And first, it starts with you. You have to be true to yourself and honest with yourself. And then you can start to help others. And then everyone will be want to be around that, that energy. Fantastic. That's, that's definitely what I want to pass along. And I'll pass that along, not through words, but action, right? My, my, my kids see me. They see, yep. they see what I'm doing. So yeah. That's the best way to do it. Where can listeners learn more about you, on-air brands, um, your real estate syndication company? Where can they follow you and stay informed of all of the projects that you're involved with? Absolutely. So the creative agency, you can find us at onairbrands.com. That's on air, 
like the like radio on airbrands.com and then uh we have a show called entrepreneur circle um where you can find that on itunes and spotify and and, and all the major platforms um and then you can also just reach out to me directly at eric at onairbrands.com that's eric with a k e-r-i-k at onairbrands.com um, yeah, and that's it. You know, I'd love to help anyone out there who has a question. You know, I just love having conversations with people and, and like I said, building relationships and, and seeing how I can help, you know, in any way. So, yeah, reach out. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value for us. And um, as always, great to connect, my friend, and always appreciate you and appreciate our conversations. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, MC. Appreciate you. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. Thank you again for joining me on the Cashflow Ninja. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here, please subscribe, rate, and write a review for our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at CashflowNinja.com. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. Until next time, my friend, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.